Hi, this is Angie with the New Normal Society. Welcome back to a class of your own. Today we're going to be talking about using Lego in your homeschool program. Most of these ideas are not new or original. You can find them on thousands of YouTube videos and blogs and Pinterest boards. But I wanted to bring the unique perspective of working with Lego for students who are on the autism spectrum. One skill that you're always working on when you do activities with Lego is fine motor. And that can be a challenge for a lot of our students. So this is kind of a fun way to work on that. Now you'll want to make sure that your pieces that you're using are not too small for your student. We're not trying to make anybody miserable here. We want to make sure that we match the size of the bricks and the number of bricks with something they're comfortable with. Something you'll want to remember when you're doing activities with building bricks is that you need to document what your student is learning for their end of the year portfolio or for whatever is required in your state for your student to get credit for their work. So you can do that by taking pictures or having your student take pictures. You can also write a couple sentences or a paragraph or have them do that if they're able to, to document all of the things that you're working on. One thing I always try to be mindful of is the fact that many families who homeschool give up a second income to be able to do so. So while we're going to look at a lot of Lego awesomeness today, we're also going to talk about activities that you can do using generic building bricks that you can pick up at a dollar store or a garage sale. In this video, I'm going to be talking about very early foundation skills all the way through things that are appropriate for college students and beyond. So I've put some timestamps in the description if you need to skip ahead. If you have a student who's kind of in the middle and you don't really need the beginning stuff, or if you have a student that's very advanced so that you can skip to those parts if you need to. The first thing we'll talk about is teaching color words using building bricks. And for this, you can either write the color word directly on the brick with a Sharpie, or you can use matching cards that have the color word, and if you need to, a clip art or a picture of the color so that your student can start matching them. This goes to one of the things that I talk about all the time, which is pairing a visual with words or text. It helps kids learn to read so much faster and helps them have a strong association for those color words. These are high frequency words. They're used a lot in children's literature, so this is considered a pre-literacy skill. Next we have patterns, and you can either create your own or you can purchase patterns that have already been designed. You want to start simple here. Teaching basic patterns is a pre-math skill, and it's actually a foundation for algebra. So you'll start by doing, here's a red brick, a yellow one, red, yellow, what comes next? And then you can get more complex. You can also have your student design patterns that you complete, or you can design patterns for them and let them complete it. You can also use building bricks to teach categories. And categories are important because they're a way that we make sense of the world. And a lot of our kids like to sort things into different categories. It can be based on color, shape, size, or some other criteria that you come up with. This is kind of a beginning skill for science and classification. Another activity that I saw all over blogs and all over Pinterest was using building bricks to form letters and to learn about letter recognition. Y'all, please don't do this to your kid. The letters that you're forming with building bricks, because they don't have curves, don't resemble anything that your student will ever see in print unless they're looking at a computer screen from the 1970s. They also don't give your student any idea of how the letters are actually formed when handwriting. A great way to teach that is with shaving cream to teach the strokes. And there's also a curriculum called Handwriting Without Tears that I use really successfully with my kids. You can use building bricks and Lego to teach so many different math concepts. Obviously, you can use them as manipulative for counting and basic addition and subtraction. They take those ideas, those sort of abstract concepts, and make them more concrete. But you can also use them for things like multiplication and division. There's a math teacher who writes a blog, and she talks about how to teach multiplication. And she has her students do equal sets or equal groups of bricks. So for example, three bricks in each set, and you have three sets. 
what's three times three. If you wanna to learn to teach division with Lego, you're gonna to have to go to her blog and I'll put that in the description because that is above my pay grade. Another math concept that you can teach is fractions. You can, for example, have a stack of four bricks and one is red and three are green. You can say what fraction of this whole is red or what fraction of this whole is green. For me personally and my kids, I found that teaching fractions with pizza was very motivating, but this may work for you and your homeschool program. I love this next idea. I saw it on Teachers Pay Teachers. Y'all know I talk about that a lot, but someone created several cards that solve problems. So you're using building bricks to, for example, build a bridge or make something that floats. And this is the kind of open-ended activity that you and your student can end up learning a lot from. Say they try to create something and it's too heavy so it sinks to the bottom. You can learn about surface area and how it relates to water or density or volume. So there's a lot of different concepts. You could go in a lot of different directions when you're solving these problems. Obviously those are cognitive skills and they're problem solving skills and they are critical for our students. If you've watched our videos, you know that I love Pinterest boards and there are a lot of activities on there that you can do with building bricks. There are fidget spinners, candy dispensers, little toy car garages. I knew a student years ago who half of his room was covered with this very elaborate Lego city that he had built. So whatever your student is into and whatever they enjoy, this is a great way to work on fine motor skills, following visual directions and problem solving all at once. Now I would tell you first, before you have your student do it, that you do it. And that way you can make sure that you have all the pieces, all the sizes that you need, and also that the directions work. Because the worst thing would be to spend a lot of time doing something and putting it together and it doesn't work as intended. So try it out first and then have your student try it. This next activity may be somewhat original. We did this when we held our summer camp, our New Normal Society summer camp back in 2017 and 2018. We had a Lego day. And our summer camps are designed for teenagers and young adults, so we wanted to do something that was fun, but that was also age appropriate. So we purchased several kits that had 50 to 150 pieces in them. So something that we felt like our students could comfortably put together in about 20 or 30 minutes. And then once they were finished putting them together, we went outside or we went around the building and had them take photos of the things that they had put together in all different sorts of environments. So our tiger found himself in a jungle that was made of grass. I'll also show you some of the things that we did personally with Star Wars or with Batman. Teaching photography as a skill is really cool and can be really fun if your student is into it. They can learn not only about just putting things together, again, working on that fine motor, but the creativity. They have to figure out where's a good scene. They have to figure out how should I shoot this? What's the best angle? What's the best lighting? How do I play with that? How do I get a depth of field effect? Photography is often an elective for students who are in high school, and that could be something for your homeschool program. And it's also a great way to document the work that you're doing. And this is a great skill to have in the real world, too. This is something that could potentially be a career for someone who's really into that. And another one of my favorites that my kids did when they were younger with their action figures is stop motion videos. And what that involves is basically putting together your creation and then filming it with incremental tiny moves between images. And when you put it together, it looks like a film. If your student is into Fortnite or Harry Potter, there are a lot of kits that are made around those characters that they can then use to do fan films. And there are tons of examples of this on the web. I'm amazed at some of the things that 10, 11, 12 year olds are able to do with this. You have to have the imagination, okay, what do I want to happen in this scene? And then be able to execute it and photograph it. You're working on so many different skills when you're doing this, it's hard to even say them all. But they're the same things that we kind of talked about throughout the video. For more advanced math concepts, you can teach geometry using building bricks. Now, one of the things, one of the coolest activities I saw was making a map of your room, or if your student is more advanced, your home. 
Students can learn about square units, about dimensions, symmetry, scale. These are all great skills to have. You can also teach them formulas for area and several other different concepts in geometry. And this is a lot more fun than just looking at something in a textbook and trying to wrap your head around what it is you're trying to do. This is a very practical application for geometry. This is the Lego Architecture Studio, and it's sort of related to geometry in that you can use it to build homes or rooms or different landmarks. This is actually my husband's set because my youngest son would not really be into using these. They're a little bit more advanced, and all of the bricks are either white or clear so that the person working on it can focus more on structure and function than color. If you have a student who's really into this, and here's the thing, a lot of our kids on the spectrum grow up and become interested in fields like architecture and engineering. This is a way to give them exposure to that, let them see how they like it. Maybe it's something that they really enjoy and a way to reach them and help them learn. This is the Lego Architect book, and it has visual instructions for how to build churches. I believe there's a Frank Lloyd Wright house in here. There are so many different learning applications for advanced students with this set. And you can see here, this is a model that we did. This came from a kit of the Sydney Opera House. So there are a lot of different options for teaching about geography, landmarks. You can imagine all of the different things that you can teach once you put this together. And finally, we're gonna talk about Lego We Do 2.0, which as I've mentioned before, is an incredible STEM curriculum in a box. We purchased this for my son using his scholarship funds, and he has used it not only in our homeschool program, but he continues to use it after he graduated. There are so many concepts here including beginning machines, simple machines, an introduction to physical science and physics, the concepts of work and energy, things like pulleys and levers and speed. These can also be used to teach coding because there are certain elements of this that are electronic and that have to be programmed within the iPad interface, which is very user-friendly, very visual, so it works great for my son. One thing that I saw that is also sort of a beginning introduction to simple machines is using any kind of building bricks to build a marble run which is something that you can make it as steep as you want or as short as you want you put a marble in it and watch it go through an obstacle course or through something that your student creates for that marble to do and then you start asking questions is it going fast enough when it gets here to do what i'd like it to do next why not there are also formulas in physics that are associated with that so you can begin to see that there are a ton of different ways that a student can learn about physics and machines hands-on. Most of these activities that we've talked about today, you're not gonna find in a public school or even a private school. Logistically, these building bricks can be a nightmare if you lose pieces or if they get stuck on the floor. So this is something that in homeschool, you can keep it organized and your student can learn so much from it. Hands-on, practical experience, independent living, fine motor creativity. There are just so many great things about this. I hope you'll join us next time in the kitchen where we'll be talking about using culinary skills in your homeschool program. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.